The U closes out the gold sheet top 20 for the 2024 football season. Let's talk about the odds for the Miami Hurricanes this upcoming season. To win the national championship, they're 55 to 1. To win the conference championship, they're 4 to 1. To make the college football playoffs, yes, plus 220, no, minus 300. Their season win total sits at 9. Over is minus 125, under plus 105. To go undefeated, they're plus 700 for yes, minus 1400 for no. And Cam Ward, 22 to 1 among the Heisman favorites at quarterback. We always look back at last year's team. Let's look at what the Hurricanes did last season. They went 7 and 6 straight up, 6 and 7 against the spread, 8 and 5 over under. Yards per play diff. They were actually number 24, plus 1.23 yards per play. On offense, yards per game, offense and defense, number 31, number 24. Points per game, number 39 and number 44. They played a weak schedule, only number 59. And when you bring in those ranks with the efficiency ranks, they work out to be number 22 on offense, number 32 on defense. They had six close games, five in the regular season. So, boy, that seven and six really could have gone either way. Against Georgia Tech, they started off the season beating Miami of Ohio, Texas A&M, Temple, and Bethune-Cookman. They host Georgia Tech. They're a big favorite. They're winning 10-0 at halftime. Then they're losing 14-10 into the fourth quarter. They take the lead back 20 to 17 with six and a half minutes to go. But Georgia Tech gets a 44 yard TD pass with 25 seconds to go. That's one close loss. They then played Clemson and Virginia, both games in overtime against Clemson. No Van Dyke. Their quarterback is out. They're tied seven to seven. They're tied 17 to 17. First overtime. They're still tied. They score a touchdown in the second overtime. They were plus two turnovers to beat Clemson without their quarterback. They get Van Dyke back the next game against Virginia. This game also at home. They're trailing Virginia 10 to 3 at halftime. They take a lead in the second half. They're up 20 to 17 into the fourth quarter. They score another TD in overtime to win back to back overtime games at home. A couple games later, Against Florida State, they're tied 10-10 at halftime. Florida State is leading 20-13 into the fourth quarter. They extend the lead to 73-13. Miami scored an 80-yard touchdown, but then threw an interception on the final, uh, final series to lose that game by seven. And then against Louisville, they led 21-20 at halftime. They led 28-23 into the fourth quarter. But Louisville went 89 yards in 11 plays and 75 yards on three plays to get to that spot. Louisville ends up winning that game 38 to 31. Before we take a look at the 2024 team, thank you so much for taking time to watch this video. I hope you are a Wager Talk subscriber. 163,000 people are. If not, Please do follow. As soon as I load the next video, you'll be notified immediately. Anything you want to see added to these videos, please comment below. Anything you disagree with, please share. We love hearing your side, how you break down the Utah Utes. What's your best bet for the Utah Utes this year? Put it down. We'll see how it goes once the season progresses. We look at every team for the upcoming year by starting with the conference cheat sheet. You'll see we have them power rated at number 18. That's third in the Big Ten, actually fourth in the Big Ten. You know, you have Florida State and Clemson at the top, Miami and Louisville right in the next in the next stage. And then you'll see there's a pretty big drop down to the next team at NC State. They return 12 starters, seven on offense, five on defense. Number 30 as far as returning production goes and recruiting. A strong, strong recruiting class for Cristobal, number six in the country, number one in the ACC. Their transfers, while they only had 15 transfers, the number wasn't huge. Talent-wise, they were rated number two transfer class in 
the ACC. The last few years, they returned 12 starters this year. The last three years, Miami has returned 19, 12, and 19. So it is significantly below the average, but again, they did return 12 starters two years ago. The draft, they lost four players to the draft worth seven points in my post-draft system, but four players may not seem like a lot for some teams, but when you return zero, when you had zero NFL players drafted the previous year and only one two years ago, four players is a significant loss after losing one NFL player the previous two seasons. Quarterback, again, we're looking at Ward. Ward spent the last two years at Washington State. He had a huge FCS year as a freshman. Washington State for two years, 3,700 yards, 67 completions percent completions in a 25 to 7 ratio. Surprisingly, they have a backup quarterback from Albany. He led the FCS in passing last year, and he didn't mind coming to Miami and playing behind Ward. So again, a deep, deep quarterback room. I will bring this up. Ward had 12 fumbles last year. Those smaller hands, you see it a lot in the NFL. That's the case in college football. He will He will need to make sure he holds on to that ball, especially in the red zone. The running backs last year, running back by committee. There were four running backs that had between 240 yards and 625 yards. They returned two, and they add a transfer who is likely to be the starter this year. They bring in Martinez from Oregon State. He had almost 1,200 yards, 6.1 yards per attempt. First team Pac-12 last year, a powerful addition to go with their transfer quarterback. Their wide receivers, they return their number one and two. They lose their three and four. They're in fine shape. The O-line loses two starters, one of those an NFL draft choice. On defense, again, they only return five starters, and they're missing a lot of their top defensive players. They return their number one tackler, but they lose eight of their next 10 tacklers. So they lose eight of their top 11 tacklers from last year. The D-line, they lose one full-time starter and two part-time starters that combine for 10 starts. Their linebacker, they lose one full-time starter and two part-time starters. Their DBs, folks, they're in trouble in the secondary. They'll need a lot of help. They lost three DBs, and all three were NFL draft choices. That is going to be the most difficult position for them to recoup from. Guys, Gold Sheet has been around since 1955. An amazing newsletter, the longest tenured football betting newsletter in the country, the most respected betting football newsletter in the country. We're very proud to have Gold Sheet as part of the Wager Talk family. Use code GOLDSHEET30, GS30 is the code, to save $30 off an annual subscription to GoldSheet. Sign up at goldsheet.com or wagertalk.com. Let's finish it off with the schedule and the better's edge. The schedule, they play another week's schedule, number 59 this year. They're favored in 10 games, and they're favored by a touchdown or more in nine games. Those grays that you see highlighted are the games between the eights. The games that they're not favored by seven points or more, they're minus two at Florida, they're plus two at Louisville, and they're a pick at home against Florida State. This Miami team has a shot to do something very, very special with that schedule the way it plays out. Their buys, their buys are in good spots. At Louisville, one of the top teams, yes, they have to travel to Louisville, but they get a bye before Louisville, and Louisville will be playing a fourth straight game, and they'll be off a road game at Virginia against Wake Forest at the end of the year. They have a bye, while Wake Forest will be playing their third straight game, and they'll be off a road game at North Carolina playing their second straight road game late in November. Their opponents have buys before two games when they play Miami of Florida. 
when they go to Cal on October the 5th, Cal has a bye. Miami of Florida will be playing a sixth straight game. And against Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech has a bye. They'll be playing their fourth straight game. When you look at the top six teams in the ACC, top team Clemson, they don't play them. Next best team, Florida State, they get them at home. Third best team, Louisville, they do have to travel to Louisville. The next two best teams, NC State and SMU, they don't play them. So they do not play the number one, the number five, or the number six best team in the ACC. Better's Edge, let's talk about some ATS numbers, and let's talk about one bettable situation I feel is the strongest for the Miami, Florida Hurricanes. Mario Cristobal, again, four years at Oregon, here are the last two years. He's been a money burner, guys, only 8-17 and 17 against the spread at Miami. When he's a favorite, up to 10. So when he's a single-digit favorite, up to minus 10, he's only 2-4 and four straight up and 0-6 oh and six against the spread. So they've done poorly as a small favorite or a single-digit favorite with the Hurricanes. When they're a favorite of over two touchdowns, minus 14-plus at Oregon and at Miami combined, since 2022, he's only 7, 16, and 1 against the spread. That is 30%. And the last couple of years at Miami, when he's at a total of 61 or higher, not only are they 0-7 over under, those games have gone under the total by a massive 10.6 points per game. So again, high totals, they've gone under. They've been poor single-digit favorites, and they've been poor Favorites of 14 or more. And again, at Miami, only 8 and 17 against the spread. Now, I did not bet this. So I'm going to walk through why it's the best bet and then tell you why I haven't gotten to the window yet. I'm going to play Miami over 9 at minus 125. Folks, they have nine games as a favorite of minus 7 or higher, six of them double digits. So if they just win every game that they're minus seven points or higher, you got at least a push. Then they have the F Florida game as a two-point favorite, at Louisville game as a two-point dog, and the home game against Florida State. If they do what you expect them to do, win those games as a favorite, they just need to win one of those last three games to cash this ticket. Now, when I look at Cristobal at Oregon, and when I looked at when he was on the road, as a favorite of minus seven or more, which is going to happen a couple times this year. He had a four and five record. That was enough to keep me off using him. He has not proven to me that he can win those big games. Yes, we expect them to win all the games as a favorite of seven or more. But again, he did go three and oh at Miami as a away favorite of minus seven or more. He did lose one game as an away favorite of six points. But you add those two together, that still only puts them at seven and six straight up as a favorite of minus six points or higher. That's keeping me off the best bet. But for the video, I'm going to go on record over nine, minus 125, the Miami Hurricanes. Smash that like button. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. Please do comment below. And again, 163,000 Wager Talk TV followers. If you missed any of the top 20, make sure to check them out. And as soon as I load teams 21 through 25, if you follow Wager Talk TV, you'll be notified immediately. I'm Ralph Michaels. Thanks for watching.